So how did Grateful Dead amass over $450 million with only one billboard hit? Well, it's simple, smallest viable market. And on today, this is marketing part one of Seth Godin's brilliant book. And this is gonna be a tactical book review. Welcome back everybody to Biz Gorilla. I'm your host, Jason Catalano, call sign Wildcat. And on this channel, we are your business book club to help you build your brand at low to no cost. And for today, we're gonna to be going over part one of this is marketing by Seth Godin. And on this particular part, we're gonna be going over the smallest viable market. That's the big idea, which is you can really amass a big brand with a very tiny few amount of people. So the big idea is that for a small viable market, for small and startup companies, you really should be going as small as possible and then over time expand the reach and expand the scope. And the way Seth talks about it is you'd rather be a specialist, tiny specialist, and reach a global market, right, and try and connect people globally, than be a generalist and try and be that towards a local population. So the first key point that Seth talks about is that ideas that spread win, right? The ideas that spread are the ones that eventually are going to win in the market. Duh, right? But how do ideas spread? Okay, normally you think a big idea, you have to get the big majority in the market, right? And so he talks about, right, we all know kind of the bell shape here. He talks about that we know that everything, right, essentially like this, everything left of the middle, this is a majority of people lie, they all lie in here, right? What he's saying is, normally it's about 2.5% of the population, right? So 2.5% way over here is your early adopters. And those are the people that you have to really make a very targeted and relevant message towards. That's gonna get them to spread your idea for you. And that if you don't secure that 2.5%, you'll never get here. You'll never cross the chasm, as he talks about, to get to the majority, okay? You first have to get a very targeted, very specific message and allow that small group to eventually spread it. Okay, so what makes the early adopters want to get something is way different than what people in the middle right here want, okay? So early adopters, what they want is new. They want something that's thrilling. They want something that's unique, novelty, okay? So when you're specifically giving your brand, it has to meet those requirements. But by definition, those are the requirements that the majority doesn't want, okay? The majority are, People that want safety, security. They don't want to be ridiculed. They don't want uh, to do things that might have them lose their job, for instance, or to be ridiculed by family. They want safety, they want security. So we talked about how to spread an idea is pretty simple. You gotta get those 2.5% to be ecstatic about your brand and they're gonna carry you in the early flows. They're gonna try and spread your message, right? And he talks about Red Bull being a good example of this. Think about Red Bull. First going after extreme sports, okay? And the idea of the energy drink didn't really spread fast from the extreme sports to the majority. But what happens is the majority sees Red Bull and they start seeing the associations of this drink, these extreme sports athletes who are very energetic, and they start making those connections over time. And then over time they start saying, wow, you know, this product is not getting bad reviews. Uh, it's not totally you know, unhealthy for you. It's not this, it's not, they start justifying how it's really safe and secure. And eventually they'll start picking it up. But this is what I really like about what he was saying is that the early adopters, what gets them excited is not what gets the majority excited. There are two different areas. So there is a bridge you have to cross at one point, but definitely manageable. Okay, so the second point that Seth talks about is the passionate few, okay? When you think about your small targeted market, the smallest viable market, you gotta think about it. these people are gonna be very passionate, it's very, very few amount of them. But what really sets them apart, he talks about, is that there's a worldview. 
that there's a change that you're going to promise, right? You have to match that worldview, okay? Think about Red Bull. Just think about Red Bull, right? The worldview is that for extreme sports athletes, it's about seeking the thrill, right? It's about the energy you get from that, that thrill seeking. And Red Bull said, here's a drink that's gonna give you that same thrill seeking, right? No matter if you're climbing, rock climbing, or skateboarding, you can get that same energy anywhere, anytime, okay? They're matching the worldview. The next thing he talks about is what is the change? What is the fundamental promise that you're giving as a marketer? And to the passionate few, this is very important. You wanna craft your message directly at them. So in the Red Bull example, what I know is Red Bull really did very, very well, was they specifically would use language that extreme athletes understood, okay? They wouldn't just say general things like, oh, you get a lot of energy. They would say, dude, you're gonna get stoked with this. Like, bro, like it's gonna be uh, just energy that just pow, hits you. Things like that, right? They definitely talked to the passionate few. Another good example that Seth Godin talks about in the book is how a politician was saying that they needed to market to everyone, right? They thought, man, we have to get a lot of votes in, we have to get 50%, you know, pretty much to win the election. So we have to get a message that's crafted to everyone. And Seth talks about to them, well, what are the numbers? He says, well, we have 724,000 people in our district. A lot of people, right? Like, yeah, you gotta get 300,000 plus votes probably if you're gonna win that, right? Well, then Seth did a little bit of research and he said, wait a minute, only like 24,000 people actually voted. That's just voting which means you only need 12,001 to win. You need 12,000 people out of 724,000. Who do you think those 12,000 people are gonna be? It's gonna be a passionate few. It's gonna be people that when they look at you, they think you're gonna be a change agent. They think that you're gonna deliver on promises. They believe in your worldview. And you may piss off 70% of the population. And if 25% are really passionate about you, clearly you're gonna be way past that 12,000, right? So that's what it means by the passionate few. There's only gonna be a few small percentage that have the energy to actually do what you're gonna require them to do. Okay, so another interesting point from Seth is that he talks about tipping points and that there's really three main ways to tip people into your brand, to get people into your brand. And he says the passionate few has to do with the few people in your brand that are one, a connector, okay? Two, a maven, three, a salesperson. Okay, so a connector is just somebody that they network. They know a lot of people, they're trusted by a lot of people, um, people take them seriously. They may not be an expert at one little thing, they may not be able to really convince other people, but they can spread the word out to lots of other people, right? So when you think about in terms of your own brand, who are the people in your tribe? who are the passionate few, who can connect you to many other people. The second one that he talks about is the maven. And the maven, the mavens are all about specialty, expertise, right? So if you're Red Bull, a maven might be a doctor, it might be a nutritionist, it might be uh, someone like Sean White, right? Who's actually in extreme sports and is really, really good at it. They're a maven at the actual sport, or they're a maven with the actual drinks. They have expertise there, and people are going to look at them as thought leaders. So those people can really dial it up in terms of how many people they can reach and influence. And then, of course, the third person, which is the salesperson. Now, the salesperson is someone that can actively convince people. It's somebody that can do either one-on-one -on -one or whether it's through video, social media. It's just these are the people that can go to their friends, go to their family, and actively convince them to make the switch. Because switching from Coca-Cola to this new energy drink, the Red Bull example, that's a tough switch, right? Even if a maven says, hey, we really like it, that really sales, that really selling you the point. Eh, is a connector really selling you to make the switch? Maybe not, it's more exposure. But a salesperson, they'll actually start looking at those resistance, they'll look at those barriers, and they can actually start knocking those down to actually get people convinced to make the switch. Okay, so the third point has to do with adopter versus adapter. It has to do with people that adopt, all on the left side of the curve. 
those people fundamentally okay, are looking at what attributes. So he talks about your axis here, right? And this might be something like, you don't want to do anything like quality or anything like that, but this might be something like speed, right? You do it faster here, this is lower speed, right? And then this axis might be another attribute, which is something like social status or you know, he, he listed in here something like maybe quality, right? It lasts a long time. He's saying that you want to be high in both of those attributes, right? Or even if it's price, right? Typically you don't want to be low price. So he talks about for the smallest viable market, you want your price to be a story and you're going to have to have high prices. So how do you justify that? And typically it's going to be you're really good you're, you're like you're one of the best you're really good at a couple key attributes that for this particular target market they value that okay you may have terrible customer service you may have terrible uh, support you might have terrible you know uh, for instance like Red Bull it may be terrible nutritionally it may be terrible in terms of taste for you know it's too sweet or things like that but for those particular people who are extreme sports athletes, you know, it gives them energy. It gives them instant energy, right? And that's something they value. So for them, that's one of the qualities, right? When we talk about quality, it's saying that, hey, if you want instant energy, this is gonna give you it. And it's not like taking drugs or anything like that, right? It's a healthier version to that. And that's exactly what Seth is talking about, is that what are the attributes in your brand that you're promoting to that specific target market. And I really like how I said that adopters care about that. Adapters on the other hand, typically they look at things like price, right? And they look at things like reliability. They're not really too into so much the social status or too much into uh, the novelty or the uniqueness or anything like that. They really, they typically are gonna go for things that are consistent, reliable, low price. They go to Walmart, they go to Target, they shop there for many, many things. But the adopter, those are the ones that are gonna to come to you because they know you have something better for a specific target attribute. Okay? So when you think about the smallest, when you think about the smallest, you know, just viable market, you always want to think what are the couple of key attributes that they value above the rest and go hard, go heavy, be on time, on target for those. Okay. You got to really win over the smallest viable market. All right, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. This was part one of This Is Marketing by Seth Godin. Big idea, of course, smallest viable market. Who can you target to get the most out of your brand? And if you wanted to get better business advice, better business tips from the best books, the best authors, the best business people, you know what to do. Be part of the subscribe tribe. Click that button down below. And I'll see you in the next video. This is Jason Catalano signing off.